4.1 number 37, we are going to find the critical numbers for this function. And of course, we need to work out our derivative first. And notice that we just need to use the power rule in this situation because for t to the sum power, so circle the exponents, bring to the front, and then minus 1. And likewise, we'll do it right here. So bring the 1 fourth to the front, and then minus 1 right here. On the first part, I will get 3 over 4 t, 3 over 4 minus 1, it's the same as 3 over 4 minus 4 over 4. That's going to be negative 1 over 4. Minus 2 times 1 over 4, it's the same as 1 half. And then we have t, 1 fourth minus 1. 1 fourth minus 4 over 4. That gives us negative 3 over 4. And now, we will try our really best to combine the fractions. First step is to bring this down to the denominators. So, here I will get 3 over 4 t raised to the positive 1 over 4 power. And I will subtract 1 half t raised to the 3 over 4 power like this. And now, in order for us to combine fractions, of course, we need the common denominators. Let us work out the numbers. Here I have the 4, here I have the 2. I will need to multiply here by 2, bottom and the top. Because 2 times 2 will produce a 4 that will match with this 4. And now, this is t to the 1 over 4. I want to match with t to the 3 over 4. We can do so by multiplying this by t to the 2 over 4. Because if I have t to the 1 fourth times t to the 2 over 4, if I add the exponents together, 1 fourth plus 2 over 4, that will be 3 over 4. So I will multiply this on the bottom and also do that on the top, t to the 2 over 4. And after we do that, we are going to get our common denominator, which is going to be 4. Okay, Both, the, both of them have 4, and both of them will have t to the 3 over 4 power. And on the numerator, here I have the 3. And let me write down the t. The power is 2 over 4, which is the same as 1 half power. And when you have t to the 1 half power, it's just the same as the square root. So t to the 2 over 4 turns into square root of t. And now, here I will just have minus 1 times 2, which is 2. So this is our derivative. And now we have to consider two situations. The first situation for the critical number is where the derivative is equal to 0. And here we have a fraction. In order for us to have the derivative equal to 0, when we have a fraction, is to have the numerator equal to 0. So in this situation, we must solve, i just write down solve, the numerator which is 3 square root of t minus 2, it's equal to 0. That will get you the derivative equal to 0. So to do this, add 2 on both sides, 3 square root of t, it's equal to 2, divide both sides by 3, square root of t, it's equal to 2 over 3, and we can square both sides to get rid of the square root, and well, let's, let's get rid of the square root and the square, <laughs> I will get t is equal to 2 thirds squared, which is 4 over 9. This is one situation for the critical number where the derivative is equal to 0. And there's also another situation for the critical number. And another situation is where the derivative does not be fixed. All right? And now, once again, our equation here is a fraction. If you set the numerator equal to 0, the whole thing will be 0. For fractions to be doesn't exist when defined, you set the bottom to be zero. So for this situation, we will have to solve the denominator, which is four t to the three over four power is equal to zero. And this can only happen after you divide four on both sides, after you do whatever you want with the exponent. This will only happen when t is equal to zero. In fact, we have to consider this as the critical number as well, because you can plug in t into the original equation, and then it works, right? h of t, when t is equal to 0, it's equal to 0. This works. But you just cannot take the derivative when t is equal to 0. So 
Overall, the conclusion is you consider these two as the um, critical numbers, 0 and 4 over 9. I would also like to show you guys how does the graph of the original function look like. So I will use my favorite software, GeoGebra. So in this software, I have to enter this function as y is equal to x to some power. So I'll do it right here. y is equal to x raised to the parentheses 3 over 4 power minus 2 x raised to the parentheses 1 over 4 power. Enter. And this is the name of the function f on the software. And as you can see, we have a curve like this. And I can double click on this curve, object property. I can choose a different color, let's say red, and then style. I can make the line thicker. So now you see this curve is like this. It's like a Nike sign, right? <laughs> and as you can see that at 0, 0, we have a vertical tangent. That's why the derivative doesn't exist at 0. And then here you see that we have a minimum value. And on this software, I can type in minimum. I can choose this part. The command is, I will have to enter the name of the function, which is f. And then I can put comma, starting x value, let's say at 0. The end x value, let's say it's at 4. And by entering this, the software can find the minimum value for us. So let's see, minimum. And notice that it says the point A, which is the minimum point, is 0 0.44, in fact, 0 0.4444 uh, forever. That's the same as t is equal to 4 over 9. So when the t value is 4 over 9, we will get our minimum value, okay? So this is what I would like to show you. So this is the graph of the function, and that's the minimum point. And once again, you consider 4 over 9 and 0 as the critical numbers.